Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So we are going to be working on this here bad boy right here. We're going to be splitting the case on this tonight. And um, you're probably wondering what that is. We'll get to that in a minute. And I have been doing some work in the shop. So you can see I hung up all my license plates. So these are pretty cool. I got some, uh, these, a lot of these were donated, like the South Dakota, the Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine. I got, uh, and a bunch of these of my own as well. So hung up some of my art there. And uh, you might notice that the Mac toolbox is gone. I uh, got rid of that and got two U.S. General boxes um, for more real estate. So... A little bit more room, a little bit more real estate to put stuff in. And, come on guys, look at that color, huh? I do have to wipe them down, uh, move them around. I got them a little dirty and greasy, but um, nevertheless, they're awesome. So, pretty stoked about that. And uh, just kind of setting up in the shop and getting some stuff out of, you know, off the ground and out of the way. Give myself some more room. So you got the little magnetos hanging up there and all kinds of stuff. So... It's uh, making it a little bit more functional. So, uh, and giving myself some more real estate in the room. I still have to do some stuff. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, Kevin, where have you been? Where have you been? I have been working on my truck. My motor was junk in my truck. My transmission, um, I changed over from a C6 to a AOD. And the transmission I got was junk. So, I have literally been working on my truck. I haven't even worked on bikes. So, we're going to be working on this motor right here. And we're going to separate this case. Get that split so we can um, take a look at the damage done to it. And find out what she needs. Also, a lot of people have been asking me, Kevin, what do I put bolts and stuff in? What, what can I use? These right here are some, um, like a, a bread pan right here. You can use an egg carton. These right here come in, come in handy, especially if you're, uh, you know, doing clutches and stuff like that you put springs bolts and everything else and the cool thing is you can write on them where they go you can use muffin pans either size works um a lot of people don't have what i have so what i use i'll show you what i use i use these little gizmos here these are magnetic trays so as i'm doing i just grab a tray that i need this one made by napa and then uh you know, if you're working on your car, you can just stick it right to the side of it and the bolts just magnetize to it because it's got a big, huge honking magnet on the back. So, they come in handy. This one right here is a super cool one. I haven't even used this one yet. I'll show you this one. This one you can see right there. This is Kawasaki. Kawasaki engines right there. They're cool. And it's the same thing. It's a magnetic plate. Um, I got that at a... That's a small engine... Uh, what do you call it? A Kawasaki one. Let me pause you guys for a second. So yeah, I would just recommend being creative of what you have. You don't need to have expensive stuff. These aren't these are cheap. You can get these at Harbor Freight, not the Kawasaki ones, but the regular one you can get at the auto parts stores. They're all over the place. They're a few bucks. But why spend the money if it's not something you're gonna be using a whole lot of? If you're not gonna be using a whole lot of, just use some stuff kicking around the house that you your um, make sure your wife is not or your girlfriend or your mother, or wherever you live, is not using it. Because if you use this, I'm just telling you guys up front, okay, if you put bolts and grease and stuff like that, and then you put it away, and she sees any grease or anything in the side there, I'm going to tell you, hell will be on earth, okay? And you don't want that. All right, so let me clear this out of the way. Okay. And... I'm going to get you guys in the stand, but before I do, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button, the bell icon, and please don't forget to give a thumbs up. It helps us move us higher in the algorithms. Also want to say, thank you guys. We just hit 9,000 subscribers. That's awesome. And I haven't been able to do a video because I've been so, so busy, but you guys have kept subscribing anyway, and you guys have just hung in there with me, and... Uh, I really, really appreciate that, though. So, so, thank you very much. Let's get you guys in the stand, and we'll start tearing this thing down. Also, another great tip. If you guys have any sheets or any um, thin blankets, you can cut them up and use them for rags. Especially if you have a spill. You can use old t-shirts and stuff like that. Be creative. Use stuff that's around you. Recycle, reuse, and um, what do you call it? Yeah, do it anyway. So... We're going to start pulling this thing apart. This is a TC120, okay? And 
the, you can see right here, the seal is popping out right here. You can almost pull that seal out. And then I believe on this side right here, it's coming out too, right down here. So what we need to do is separate this case. Because see the play in that shaft? And this, this um, transmission has a shifting problem. Okay, so we need to diagnose and see what's going on with this bad boy. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to start taking off this big piece right here. We have this big nut right here for the uh, final drive. We have to remove the keyway. And we have to remove this. This is very crucial to remove. What is this? This is your neutral safety switch. So, on some bikes, not these ones, but on some bikes, like four-strokes, like Hondas, Kawasaki, big bikes, you know, like um, street bikes, this right here can actually prevent your bike from starting if it doesn't see a um, doesn't see a, uh, a, a neutral, okay? And then that little screw right there pops out, and the wire goes into that, and now right there is for your neutral light, and now right there operates the green light on your gauges. So, the, um, when you're in neutral, the green light will come on and say, hey, you're in neutral. All right, let me get a pair of pliers, and we'll take that apart. Okay. The sprocket is good, so I don't want to damage it. And then um, I'm going to use a 32-millimeter uh, uh, socket. Let me, get a, uh, let me get all set up here for a second. Milwaukee M12, I should have prepared for that. I didn't. I apologize. I hope everybody's been doing great. Hope your projects are coming along well. And uh, next week we'll be doing Two Stroke Tuesdays again, which is nice. I've been asked a lot about that for Two Stroke Tuesdays. If you guys have a chance to get a Milwaukee M12 product, they are by far the best. And then right here is a sleeve. Now you don't want to mar that up. You just want to be able to grab it and take it off. So try to walk it back as gentle, gentle as you can. Okay, yep, perfect. This right here is what the seal rides on. And if they are not tapered, so say you have a bike that's tapered, it has to go in the direction it came out. But you see how this one has some, a little bit of wear on it? The cool thing about this is you can flip this collar around and use the other side, which is what we're going to do. Okay. Also, you have a dowel pin. Make sure you take that out so you don't lose it. And then, first things first, before we do anything, we're going to remove that neutral safety switch. So let me get a uh, screwdriver. I'm going to show you guys a screwdriver that I absolutely love to use. And these are my favorite. I take these things to junkyards and everything. And I have snap-on screwdrivers. I have some really nice ones. Oh, uh, let's see here. In fact, even my snap-on ones are, uh, what do you call it, they're green-handled. But, you get these at the auto parts store. And they come in different different types. I got, uh, I got many of them. And I'm going to tell you something about these. These are flippable. Okay? So you get a number two and a flathead on that side. Okay? Then you flip them back again. And you have a number one and a small blade of flathead. These things are so... These are four screwdrivers in one. And I'll be honest with you. When they do go, you just throw them away. Okay? They're cheap. They're like a couple bucks. So I got a bunch of them. I got them in my truck. I have anywhere. And uh, I got one in my house in my uh, in the uh, junk drawer. So when I'm in the house and I'm taking apart something or um, got to change the batteries or something, these are great to have. Taking these apart can be tricky because they've been sitting on it for so long. So what we're going to do... You have to be very careful with these because... There, um, so I can't, I can't push it onto it much, even with the screws out. Okay, you can't really get too much of a grip on them, and you don't want to hurt that uh, plastic thing in there. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the size that fits inside there, slide it in a little bit. You see what I did there? I didn't go too hard, but I'm gonna show you. What I did was I slide it in here like this, and then just kind of rocked it back and forth. And it gave me enough leverage to break it free without undoing. Now you see that gold 
that little gold tab right there that right there is corresponding with the screw so that right there when that contact that brass contact right there makes contact with this it grounds it out and then it turns your light on so the power is at the at the um from the power wire goes up to one side of the light and then this is the ground this is reading ground okay now i'm gonna be pulling that through and i don't want to hurt that tab that tab It's right there and it's keyed in properly. So let me get a screwdriver. We're gonna take that apart. And we're gonna put that someplace very safe because it is a very fragile little piece. Okay, let's see if we get the right side here. Boom right there. Alright. Get my M12. Bit driver. Okay. Now right here. Whoop, too close. There you go. See that little tab sticking up? This tab right here is what rides on the switch. So when it comes around, it makes a contact with that brass contact, turns the light on. And then this little tab right here is your, identi your identifying tab. And that, see right there, it goes in that bottom part of the groove and then the screw goes in the top part. Okay, so that's how that goes. We want to keep that safe and secure without losing it. Screw, I put the screw back into it. I set it right inside of it like so. And I'll put that off to the side. Okay. So now the safety aspect of this is done. Except for this um, keyway. So let me get something to take the keyway out. Some of these keyways can be a bear. So I'm going to use my little, my little craftsman tapping screw or my brass. Either way. I'm going to try the brass first because this won't mar it up. Okay. I moved it. And then, use my wire cutters, clamp onto it, pry it up, just kind of walk it up. Okay, and I'll put that right on one of the magnets on the magneto. Okay. So now we are clear to take this apart. These little screws with that cover. And now what we're going to do is remove all the cover screws on this thing. They're all the way around the crank and on the outer case. So I'm not going to bore you with that part. I'm just going to zap all these screws out real quick. And then um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got all the screws out except for one, and I want to show you guys an awesome thing about these older Suzuki engines. This cut, this side right here that typically breaks off, like on the K, um, the KV seventy fives, this right here typically breaks. This is replaceable on this engine, which is nice. So we'll keep that right off this side, and then I'm going to take off that last bolt right here that's underneath of it. Okay, and that takes care of that. So all the screws are loose. And now I'm just going to take a pizza box. I'm going to draw it out real quick. Poke the holes. And put each one of these screws right back where it comes. Now. So I'm going to stop here for a quick moment. And I'm going to talk to you guys about something. I use a Milwaukee M12 impact driver. Okay. Many people don't have this. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of cool tools that I also use. Okay. And you can get these at, at the auto parts store. You don't you don't have to. You can get they're both the exact same one. Um, these are called bit drivers right here. Okay. And what these are is you would take this right here, the bit. You stick the bit in here. And you stick it on the screw. You turn it in the direction you want to go in. And then you hit right here with a hammer. A couple of really good hits. And it shocks them loose. 
and um, takes them apart. Now, many of you guys know I've been doing this professionally for a long time. These are my cheap generic ones from auto parts stores. Okay, you can you can absolutely get these if you're a uh, professional and you've been doing this a while. You'll have pretty much the same thing, but the kit will look a little different. This is the same thing, but in Snap-on, right here. And then you can see how the variety of bits and stuff like that and sockets. It's the same thing. You don't need to spend all the money on a, um, a professional kit like this. Those ones right there that I showed you in the black case work just fine. So, keep that in mind when you're doing these. You don't have to spend $300 on a power tool. You can go to the pot store and you can get these. And also, too, say you didn't want to buy this. You can actually rent this for free at AutoZone or any other part, auto pot store like Advanced Auto. Um, you can just tell them you're looking to rent the tool. And then what you would do is you would pay full price for this. Okay? You would rent it for full price. And then you have an option. One, you can keep it. And they already, you already paid for it. Or two, you can return it back to them and they will give you back your full amount of money. So keep that in mind. Okay. So that's how their rental thing works. Alright, let me get a pizza box, mark this down, and then we're going to pull this apart. Okay, so you get a pizza box. I didn't really have a good pizza box. This is the sauce my son eats. This stuff is terrible. Um... In fact, I think I have one in my glove box in case I get a flat tire. This pizza right here can be used as a uh, flotation device. Anyway, so what you're going to do is just take your uh, box and go Pablo Picasso. What I do is crank, crank, output, and then I do the studs. And then basically just go around and count how many screws you got. We'll start here. The one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Six that way. There's one over here. This one in the back. And then there's nothing up top except for this one over here. And then the other two are into the case. We'll leave those right in there. Then I'm going to poke the holes. And then when we take the screws out, we can stick them right in the cardboard. And this is why I use a paper, um, a cardboard uh, pizza box. Because it's very difficult to remember e exactly where all these different shape, sky, uh, size screws go. And um, so you want to make sure, you know, even if you've been doing this for a long time, I deal with a lot of different engines. So what I like to do is just keep track of them this way. And it's just one of those things when you start doing them, it becomes second nature to you. And you don't have to worry about, did I put that screw in the correct place? And each screw come back, it goes back into the exact same spot that it came out of. And then just move it off to the side. And then what you're going to do is you're going to verify you got all the screws out. You're going to check all the way around. You can check underneath the case. Into nooks and crannies, cracks and crevices. Make sure the block is somewhat clean. And then you can do one more thing. I have had a couple of engines where there's been a silly screw on the other side. Okay, and I call it a silly screw because you have no idea it was there. So you just rotate the engine, check it out, make sure that there's no um, screw on this side for the block. Okay, it looks like we're good here. These are um, tapered screws. So it would look like a case screw, okay? So you want to keep check that out and then um, go from there. Okay, so it looks like we're good there. I'm going to get my, clean up a little bit of this crap around me. And then we're going to get the, the pull, pull um, all set up and get that pulled out. Okay, so I got that all set up and I'm trying to find three bolts that screw into where the magneto screws into. Or they're about and you can see right here they are very small threaded screws and the ones that I have are a little too big 
So what do we do? We can't screw them in there. So this is a Mac pulling kit. And in here, it has knocked down tapered screws, but these are still too big. These, I believe, are actually the same size as these. Nope, next size up from that. Okay, so those ain't going to work. So then, I'm just taking a peek to see if I have anything in here that would work. I do not. So nothing in that pull kit. Alright, so on both both pulling kits, I got both of my crank pulling kits out and both of these do not have that size. So what I need to do, and here's the big size for those. So what I need to do is find a small setup that will work on this. So give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, plan B and a half. Since I don't have screws and I have to get screws, which I'm going to get longer screws for this particular motor, we're going to use a brass hammer. Make sure it's brass. Do not use a steel hammer. And I have this wedge. This is a plastic wedge for doing, uh, what do you call it, their tree removal. So what we do, it already came apart. Love taps. Gentle love taps. Don't uh, Hannibal Lecter it. Just want to go a little bit. And then what I do with this is I stick this in the back. And it keeps it, uh, what do you call it there? Allows me to separate the front. This thing's falling apart and I already see some damage in there. Oh, maybe not. It looks like it was rubbing. No, it just looked old. Yeah, I do see some damage. Okay. We have split the case manually. Oh. Trying to be gentle when you're taking it apart. Just once again, choke up on the handle so you can just tap, tap, tap. Down here, it's going to make it harder. Down here, it's going to make it a little easier on it. Okay? Don't force it. Let it come apart as it wants to. Wait till you guys see this. These are teeth right here, stripped right off the gear. All right, so hold on. Put the magnetic. Just want to make sure I'm putting this back together. Right, hold on one second. I'm just picking these up as I took them apart, as they fell apart, I should say. And that goes on first. This goes on second, like that. I don't want to lose the orientation of the thrust washers. So now is the time when you have to be super critical, okay, of how this thing came apart. And this one right here. Like that. So this transmission has a high and low. And it's actually built in on this side right here and that's what the shifter is in the middle okay we're going to get into that portion of it after but just like on the ke um the 10 speed there the g4 uh, tr you can see where the uh, the bearings go and it changes the high and low okay 
but we're not gonna we're not worried about that at the moment I just want to make sure I get this all the way back apart the way it, in the orientation that it goes in it's all I care about okay and then on your output shaft right here there is a very thin o-ring if you lose this o-ring that seals this um, shaft right here to call that the uh, the um, we got oil seal rides on it will leak right out through here and the oil seal will be useless because it won't it'll just be sealing around here it won't be sealing on the shaft this little guy right here is what does that so this sits on there in there first okay we'll just put new orientation back to the way it goes okay so that takes care of that now once we get it all back together we can take a look at the teeth on here and you can see these gears are here on this transmission look all good the dogs for the most part are all straight so these are these are called dogs and if you can see that not right there okay and the edges of them are supposed to be crisp this will be nice straight cut cogs okay if these are rounded off see fine one these look really good um if they are rounded what will happen is it'll keep popping out of gear all right and we don't want that so this shaft with all these gears on here look good This big gear right here is your Kickstarter gear. Also looks good. I see more teeth in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to go back on this side and take the keeper out. So right here is the keeper. See that Phillips screw right there, those two? That holds that shaft in. Okay. That holds those, that shaft in. We need to take that out. That's the keeper right there that holds that in. And then this shaft will slide right out with the rest of it. Okay. So here looks good. Bearings feel good. Everything feels good there. Here's the internal gear right here. There's a thrust washer. Okay, so this. That gear looks good as well. Okay, so we're good on that one. These are your shifting forks. You can see the wear on them. Wait, I gotta shrink you guys back down here. Okay, here's the wear marks right here. These are good. I thought they were broken, one of them, but nope, it's good. These, these shifting forks are beautiful. What happened? Right here. Do you see all the teeth ripped off that gear? We need to replace that gear. So this, this gear right here, which is, it does slide on the shaft by the shifting fork. And basically, this right here meshes up with the other gear on the shaft. And there's no teeth, so there's a shifting problem. And then, the teeth from this get jammed between two other gears. And guess what? Transmission locks up, it doesn't shift, there's your problem. Other than that, everything on this looks good. And I'm going to let him know so he can go ahead and order that that particular gear right there. i got to look up in the book and find out which gear it is. Um, and uh, he, he sent the manuals with the, with the uh, motor and everything. So we're good there. And everything feels really, really good. We just got to clean up the case and do all that. So he's, uh, he's pretty lucky. He made out really good. He needs new crank seals. The gasket, which he sent the gasket kit with it. Um, he's gonna need crank seals, the uh, this this sprocket right here, and I forgot what else it needs, but that was in the other video, so I'll have to go through and check all that and remember what it was. And then uh, that's really not that bad, so it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Crank bearings, everything feels good. Basically, just you're just rotating them and feeling if there's any growliness. Luckily, 
There's not even any metal in this thing, which is really nice. Typically, when you when you lose all the gears like that, this must have like just happened. Normally, when it rips all the, all the uh, teeth off like that, there's a tooth right there. When it rips all these off, it's shavings of metal everywhere. By the way, I believe on this one you're supposed to have eight balls. Let's see if we can um, what do you call it? Define all eight of them and get something to put them in. Retrieving the balls is pretty simple. I use my little screwdriver. You, you know, to get a snap on one, they give these away. So, uh, but you can get these at any auto parts store. It'll just like if you got an AutoZone, it'll be the AutoZone color will probably be red or orange, and it'll say AutoZone on it or Advanced Auto. Wherever you go, Pep Boys has. Everybody's got them, and it's got a little magnet on the end of it. And I'm recycling an old Walmart pill container. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to count them. Make sure I have eight. Two, four, six, eight. All right, I have all eight of the balls. This prevents them from rolling around and going all over the place. Okay. So, that's where we're at with this one. I will give him a call first thing in the morning. Let him know what he needs for parts and pieces. And he sent up the gasket kit with the motor, which is right here. And if you have a TC120, here is the part number for the gasket kit. SCM-TC120. And um, this has all of his gaskets that he needs. Exhaust, head gasket, case gasket. This one doesn't use silicone. You need to use a gasket on this one. Because of the thickness. If you don't, you're going to mess it all up. So we have that. We have the gaskets. So he's going to need a seal kit. The bearings are actually very, very good. I have no uh, qualms with any of the bearings. The crankshaft seal on this side over here is falling out. What was it? This side. Yeah, this side here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop that seal out real quick. And when we pop out that seal, we're going to take a look and see if that bearing is blacked. If the bearing is black, he's going to need a crank bearing. Let's see if I can find something a little better than that. Okay, yep, seal. Let's see if it pops right out of there. Okay, so there's a seal. See how the bearing is shiny? It's not black. It feels good when it rotates. That's a good, good bearing. Um, typically, what happens is when this steel when this seal goes, it sucks in dirt as the engine's running, and it turns that bearing black. And you'll notice that the ball, some of the balls, will be closer together than all over the place. So when you're looking at a bearing, a couple things to look for. Is you want to see equal spacing. You don't want to see any metal in there. And it should feel nice and smooth. Okay. This right here. The seal did its job even though it was halfway out. So we need to crank seal there. Okay. Now with that all set out of the way. Take a quick peek here. This is really good. This is this is better than I thought. Okay. Let's see here. On this side. And then same thing, this one has a ring. So we're going to see if we can pop this out. Not going too hard. Okay, it doesn't want to come out like that. So let's see if we can't get that seal out another way. Um, the seal is not in all the way on this side either. So there's a little um, collar, just like on the output shaft. I'm going to pull that off real quick. Here's the 
Same thing with this one. It's not tapered. If you need to, you are okay to flip that. All right, now, let's see if we can't get that seal out. These seal removal tools come in handy, guys. If you have a chance to get one, get one. If you're going to take apart an engine, and you're going to be this far into it, do the seals. Don't mess. Even if it didn't have a problem before, you could mar them up putting them back together. So he's going to need crank seals. He's going to need an output seal and a shifter seal. Okay. Looking at that bearing. See how that bearing looks nice? We're good there. If it had blacking all around it and it looked bad, I would replace it. It's got a little bit of oil on there because this is on the oil side. Not a big deal. That's how it's supposed to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put this one back in like that. Just so I know it goes in that direction as we pulled it out. The other thing is you can always watch my videos and then you'll know the correct way of putting it in and out. Okay, so that's... What I found with that, and I'm going to button this thing up, put it all, box it up, and uh, just wait for parts now. So hopefully, guys, this helped you with the teardown of the, T, uh, the TC120 engine and um, on Mark's bike. I'm going to go ahead, let him know that we're going to clean up all these parts and pieces, and I'm going to do that when I go to put it together. So I'm going to do some prep work. I'll probably do that tomorrow night. We'll do some prep work. We're going to pop the seals out, clean the case, get it all done. And I'm going to show you guys, um, I'm going to be washing all this. And some of the stuff that I use is from SuperClean. SuperClean has been a great product. I have been using these for years. And uh, SuperClean had reached out to me, sent me the, some stuff, some product. And uh, let's see here, some of the other stuff I use is the degreaser so you got the spray foam can the spray i got a gallon of stuff stuff works great i love it so if you guys have a chance get out there get yourself some of the super clean stuff it's really good for doing these cases especially the foam i like the foam um because when you're foaming it it literally gets into all this all the cracks and crevices and then i'll show you what i use to clean this you're gonna laugh but it really works good uh, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I got this thing for free. That's a pressure washer right there. That is a little electric 1400 PSI, 1400 PSI pressure washer. And I'm telling you, it works, it works great. And if I'm doing like a big engine on the back here, I got a little soap uh, gun that I put the super clean in and I could turn that on, spray it out the nozzle. I'm telling you, it works amazing. If you have a chance to pick one up to like 100 bucks, 110 bucks over at Harbor Freight, um, I don't even know who makes that one. I don't care. I got it for free. I put an O-ring into it. It worked great. It worked so great that I actually put quick disconnects on it. So, okay, back on this. So that's how I'm going to clean this case. And then after it's all washed out and cleaned, I blow it all out. I lube all the bearings, make sure everything moves smoothly, smoothly and freely as it should. And then after that, we get the parts. We can go ahead and assemble this. So anyway, guys, I want to take a moment and say thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I just want to say the videos are coming and we're going to be doing a whole lot more. So uh, we won't be working on this motor tomorrow night. Um, we will be working on Brian's, um, we call it GT80, and uh, we have a lot of work to do that, so I'm kind of doing these two at once, and then we, uh, we have a lot of stuff, guys, a lot. So I can't wait to do all this for you guys and show you guys what we got going on. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I will talk to you later. I'm out.